I'm really pleased that Alexis Sale has uh, agreed to come on to uh, Not the Andrew Marr Show. Um, everyone knows Alexis Sale, but I'll just, I'll just give a background. He was one of the premier founders of the alternative comedy. The founder, I think. The founder. <laughs> the founder of the alternative comedy. I have nothing comedy. left apart from my legacy. And, and uh, is, has been continuing to write and perform uh, all the way through and not really compromise himself in, in what he wants to say and uh, not try and get uh, money, particularly from, from just setting out. So, I mean, I think we should all uh, be really grateful with, that he's still speaking out as he does. And I'm, just to prove it, I'm going to play a clip from... It's Alexis Earl's imaginary <laughs> sandwich bar. Um, and this is... This is uh, this is, you'll see what it's called. Uh, and here we go. I hate Keir Starmer. <laughs> I hate Keir Starmer. I hate him aesthetically. I hate his fussy little, too perfect, just shy of Nazi officer haircut. I hate his prime minister from central casting face, which initially seemed designed by committee but increasingly suffers from having an expression slapped on it like he's desperately trying to explain away his role in a sex scandal at the dog pound he runs. <laughs> I hate his pedantic voice, which makes everything he says sound like an HR meeting you didn't really need to be at. <laughs> a small man, physically short, sure, yes, but that's not really notable, except as a symbol of the immense spiritual shortness that it signifies is aesthetically petty and dull, a piece of hotel art made man. <laughs> I hate Keir Starmer. I hate him ethically. I hate the way that Starmer poses as an honest man, then casually breaks every pledge he made to the Labour membership before they elected him as leader. I hate that he's a liar and he's not even good at it. Plainly what he is good at is being a coward. I hate Keir Starmer because what we all need is the possibility of actually doing something, concrete action that might actually make the world a better place and Keir Starmer is a fat bag blocking this possibility. <laughs> I hate Keir Starmer like a malfunctioning bus stop sign that keeps telling me my bus is about to show up, but it never does. <laughs> I hate Keir Starmer because he has been imposed on me, whether I like it or not, and he will not go away. The only time he looked like winning an election was when he was up against Liz Truss. <laughs> A blustering idiot who seems to have gotten lost on the way to filming a series of The Apprentice. <laughs> and accidentally ended up being appointed Prime Minister. <laughs> Even if Starmer was replaced, one suspects his wing of the Labour Party would conspire to put Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting in charge instead. Someone who looks like Starmer's son, who he made out of margarine. Now, uh, that's where the, the clip cuts out, but... Um... You know, the, the, the idea of a joke about Keir Starmer, I mean, I have not seen anyone else uh, on on mainstream media uh, do jokes about Keir Starmer. And uh, it's remarkable to think that that's the case when you think Jeremy Corbyn, when he was leader, it was every week you'd have some kind of show, of, uh, whether it was... Um, whether it was The Last Leg or whether it was... Uh, Mock the Week. Uh, not the week or the or the one with uh, Ian Hislop and um, not uh, yeah. Have I got news for you? Have I got news for you? I mean, they were they were constantly uh, ridiculing uh, Jeremy Corbyn and also buying into the anti-Semitism smears uh, against him and most of uh, a lot of the Labour Party. You know, what? Why do you think that is? What's happened to comedy? Because when you were doing alternative comedy, it was. It, it was revealing it was it was it was taking on all these people why yeah. has comedy been bought like that uh, i mean to be you know to be fair there are people who are doing bits and pieces about starmer i think frankie boyle has um has been critical of him for example so it's not entirely true but obviously compared to the weight of um of disdain and kind of hatred that jeremy corbyn got it is um it is very muted the criticism of starmer and it i i mean why that is the case it's hard to know i think um 
obviously socialist I you know I was uh you know it used to be it used to be advantageous I think in your career in the 80s to at least pretend to be a socialist uh, even if you then, you know, moved rightwards afterwards. Whereas now, I think that socialist. I mean, I mean the possibility of 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 socialism embodied by Corbyn frightened the uh, the media so much that uh, that the, that entire you know our entire structure of power, I think, frightened them so much that uh, they really rallied the troops against him. And so, I think that comedians are just falling in line with that really it's not uh you know there's um they've made it very clear that there's a price to pay i mean particularly if you criticize israel for example or our anti-colonialist you know you'll pay a price for that and uh, most comedians don't want to pay the price they it's a business it's a business for them you know which is but i mean if it, it, it you in your case you're you're um you're you're loved for, for for speaking out and saying the right saying what what's true. Um, yeah, it hasn't done you any damage, really, has it? No, not at all. I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't pretend that I've suffered from my views, really, because I haven't. I'm a you know to be a almost a, a family figure, you know, a, a national treasure. To be on desert island discs while being, uh, you know, being an un un unreconstituted Marxist is quite an achievement, really. I'm not sure whether um, I don't know if if that will ever happen again. I came up. I mean, I think I'm uniquely protected in some ways. I've been in the, you know, I've been in the entertainment business for over forty years. I've, and you know, I know a lot. You know, I know a lot of the. I'm not an outsider in a sense. I know a lot of the people inside the business. I mean, I occupy a, a, a kind of strange position, really, of being half in and half out of the kind of, you know, the the entertainment game. Uh, and so I, I, I think I'm uniquely protected. Really, uh, a younger comedian, I think, probably coming up would that it would, would face much more um, savage choices. There probably are. I mean, I'm I'm a bit ignorant of the scene. There probably are ones that um, you know are, are um, socialist. I think Tom Mayhew, for instance, is pretty. Um, you know, yeah, it's pretty straight down the line socialist. But it's they make it. They make it tougher, you know. They learn all the time, don't they? The power, the you know, the the the, the power elite learns all the time, uh, adapts, and um, you know, they, they. But sort of ridiculing or or satirizing uh, Starmer is a very powerful method of undermining the whole the whole project that he's got there. Um, so it's it's I mean, it's if they're not being given any airplay or. Or, or stage time, these comedians. Then that that's another aspect of censorship that a lot of people. Yeah, not I think this. Yeah, you know, the the sign of a a healthy society is where those in power are satirized, are made fun of. That's the health. You know, that's the most healthy society that you can get, where those in power allow it, and and and, the, and people are free to do it, and the degree to which. I mean, not just you know that that people are unwilling to criticize Starmer, but also the the degree to which ideas that de don't de you know that deviate from um, neoliberal capitalism, uh, war mongering, uh, colonialism, neo colonialism, yeah, you know, the idea those ideas are are very much marginalized now, and it means that our society. In general, I think is is becoming less healthy, really. Yeah. As we move towards autocracy. Oh well, uh, <laughs> well, we'll talk about that maybe in a bit. But I just wonder: do, do you actually think Starmer is uh, his own man? Uh, do you think he's a danger in himself, or do you think he's a puppet for the establishment? It certainly seems. Well, I didn't know much about him, really. Um, but uh, it certainly seems that he is, you know, he's been placed there. The rapidity with which he got a safe Labour seat and the way he um, 
you know, he'd lied to the to the membership and installed himself. And uh, I know that I think Alex Nunn's got a book about him, which you know, he's very close to um, Holder. I think the U.S. Attorney General. He's very close to figures in the U.S. intelligence community. And I imagine he's also close to people in in the British intelligence community. And I think there's a there's a think there's a, a fair chance that he is a a plant, or even he seems so wooden sometimes that he could be a kind of an AI robot, really, couldn't he? Because he's so he's so maybe that's maybe that's so their good. ideal. That's what the the establishment yeah. want. They yeah, yeah. Well, he's they'd rather yeah, just have an AI robot, wouldn't they? Yeah, he's Cyberdyne Systems T one thousand Keir Starmer model. Yeah, he's he certainly seems. Um, yeah, and it's a un, it's I think it's an unprecedented situation where it would seem without being, without getting you know too kind of loopy about it. But the fact that he's a, his membership of the Trilateral Commission, you know, an organisation which believes that too much democracy is a bad thing. Uh, his, you know, his links with the security services. Um, you know, this is, I don't think this has ever happened before that somebody who is so plugged into the power, you know, uh, is leading the opposition and will presumably in time become prime minister. I think is, uh, it's a remarkable new twist, really, and he is a very dangerous character and you know i i reproach myself because i played in a charity charity football match with him a few years ago and i i i i, I you know castigate myself for not taking him out at the time really if i don't was he on the other side i you can't think? remember it was <laughs> my contribution wasn't that i can't remember I mean, you know i could have taken him out if he'd been on my side or the other side i should have taken him out i should have crippled him yeah, that would have been a, that would have been. A I would result. have done the world a favour. Yeah, I mean, do do, do you uh, do you think uh, for I mean, for example, there's there's a there's a plan to unseat uh, Keir Starmer in in Holborn and St Pancras. Now, um, this is run by the organised Corbyn inspired Socialist Alliance, which is Okisa. It's already got four thousand two hundred members. They've set up a company uh, to to finance the campaign against yeah. Starmer. Now, uh, I've been looking on social media and also on the show, people have been saying, well, I'll tell you who lives in um, Holborn and St Pancras. Uh, Alexis Sale lives in Holborn and St Pancras. Yeah. He'd be a great candidate to stand against Stommer. And pe yeah. people, we need a bigger name. Uh, so what I have to ask you, which is the big reason why everyone's watching this interview, possibly, um, would you stand against Stommer if, if we all get on our hands and knees uh, <laughs> and, and, it, and beg you to. It's tempting, but I think ultimately that the sacred role of the comedian in our society is to be a, you know, is to be a, uh, an antic figure who criticizes everybody and in the end can't, you know, can never stand for a political party or can stand for power. Really. It's not my, I mean, literally, you know, my job is that I, and my, character is that I can't take anything seriously so you know it's a uh, I I'm, I'm very grateful for the nomination but uh I, I I will respectfully have to decline no oh, well you've been you've been pretty clear on that unlike Starmer would be if he had it yeah he's, I mean that's another thing about him he's fucking um yeah he's such a weaselly little fuck isn't he so he can't even um, you know, he can't even lie well, as I say in the in the mo in, in in the monologue. Really, it's, I have to have to say I didn't write that. I actually saw it on. It was a left wing academic whose name I've temporarily forgotten who wrote it on Squawk Box, I think, or somewhere. And I just paid him to use it on the radio show. But, but the, 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 the the yeah, the lying. I mean, he, he's he he the Sue Gray thing. I mean, that he just won't answer the question. He had like yeah, eight, eight, and it eight, sort eight, of shows eight, how. Again, how it seems to show how connected they all are, really. They, I mean, that's one of the things that I mean, that's one of the things he hated about Corbyn was he didn't go to their dinner parties. He didn't go, um, you know, he he didn't hang out in their clubs. He didn't think he didn't care what they thought. But clearly, there is this kind of nexus of journalists and politicians who who interact really, and it's um. 
you know, it's it, it's really unhealthy and um, uh, suspicious thing. Really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. I mean, do you think a star? I mean, I've been I've come to the conclusion from discussing this, but a, a Starmer government would be really authoritarian. Do you not think? And do you think it would actually be worse in some ways than a Tory uh, government? I suspect so. I mean, we'll have to see, really, assuming it comes about. But I suspect in many ways, yeah, he seems to have deeply authoritarian um, leanings. He, he was a he was a right bastard when he was at the DPP. Uh, and, um, you know, it's also that if you, if you close off any protests from the left, if you say that, you know, you, if you offer this people who are disaffected, no opportunity to protest from the left, then that also forces them to the right, I think, which is, which is one of the very many dangers of Dharma of kind of, um, of uh, making socialist views, you have deriding socialist views, of saying that people who are socialists are you know, racist, for example, is um, you know it's a deeply dangerous thing to do, really. So he, he, I mean, I think that he will be authoritarian. I think by shutting off, closing down the left, that he, also that he will uh, encourage authoritarianism of the of the extreme right as well. I think it's. Uh, I mean, the thing about prescribing, you know, it's prescribed these groups in the Labour Party. I mean, yeah. when he, if he got into government, uh, I, he can prescribe groups generally outside in, in any, you know, you can say this is a terror group, this is a, a, a racist group. He could probably prescribe the groups he's done in the Labour Party as a as a government. He could probably take them out. Uh, it's possible, yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, I think that. He, yeah, I, I, I hope in some ways that he, if he does form a government, that he will then suddenly be much more vulnerable in a way. But certainly, I mean, the the, the fuckers around him and stuff, the 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 triumphalism and the factionalism of of, of those people is um, it's really repellent. I think so. Generally, I mean, so you're not, you don't want to, you, you can't stand uh, for. I'm not allowed to stand. The sacred, not allowed to. Sacred, right, okay. sacred contact of, contract of the, of All the right. of the comedian doesn't allow me to stand. Well, what about uh, the idea of it? Do you think the idea to unseat Starmer is is worth pursuing? Because I mean, if if enough people, there must be hundreds of. I mean, there's there's lots and there's thousands and thousands of people in North London who go to. Uh, Homer yeah. and Pancras. Do you think they could make enough of a difference to? It's worth a go, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I mean, anything that. I mean, the media are so lazy and complacent, and you know, I, I mean, we've never had a, a media that is more. You know, just um, more, just passes on government propaganda or, you know, centrist propaganda. Really, I think that again that that. You know, the, this generation of the Koonsbergs and stuff are so Robert Peston and those other shites are so just so much mouthpieces of of the power, you know, that um, anything that challenges um, that that idea, I think, is worthwhile, really.